Well, welcome back everyone to GGN. This is uh, the second part. We're going to have two parts for today for uh, Monday, uh, December 23rd, 2013. My website's ggnonline.net where you can get updates from there. Um, also on YouTube, DDarko2012, DDarko2013. All right, moving on. Uh, weird weather hits America's bread basket. We talked about this on, uh, what, Friday? The storm that was heading uh, towards the east and about all the the uh, the crazy weather modification that we've had. I mean, we had the cold weather, then all comes the all of a sudden comes the warm 40 degree weather. Uh, they melt all the snow, and um, they spraying the shit out of us, harping the shit out of us, and and so now it's cold again. So, and uh, I'll go into more detail about that. But they go through this whole sad story of these farmers. It says, we had two bad years of flooding and then got slapped in the face with two really bad years of drought. Uh, we got people who never believed in climate change who are really scared right now. So they got to throw that stuff out there for you, right? It says, in the last five years, the American heartland has whipsawed between extremes. Fires, downpours, 100-year floods, and record-breaking dry spills have all seemed to hit harder and more frequently than before says, while well, not all farmers believe that the mayhem represents evidence of a warming world. That's so, that's so stupid, of a warming world. Because they don't call it global warming anymore because they know that people know it's an effing lie and that they're spraying the, uh, spraying the sky and modifying the weather, at least partly. Or there's some kind of natural change in climate. Yeah, climate change, that's why they changed it to climate change because we're heading into an ice age or at least a significant cooling period, so they don't want to call it that. They just want to make sure that they blame... Uh, all the people who, who are basically, for lack of a better word, slaves, uh, they want to blame the slaves for being slaves and for damaging the planet, right? Uh, so anyways, I'm going to move on here because that article is just uh, ticking me off. Christmas in the dark storm brings ice and outages to the Midwest and Northeast. This is from today, the 23rd. Thousands of people face the prospect of spending the holidays in the dark after a huge ice storm knocked out power throughout the Midwest and New England. 4,000 homes and businesses in Michigan, upstate New York, and northern England remain without electricity. But that's not the only place you also have in Canada. Ice storm knocks out power for almost a half a million people in Ontario and Quebec. They say that the heat and lights won't come back on uh, for many homes until after Christmas. So, Merry Christmas, uh, Canadians. Uh, in New England, they remain without electricity uh, Monday morning after thick ice fell uh, trees and brought down power lines according to utility companies and they're also saying as far as the New England and uh, US that many people will still be using candlelight or whatever flashlights until Thursday so they say it's a big deal it's Christmas and we just had a major ice storm so this is like a big F you Christmas present wrapped up uh, by our masters because they caused this I mean, that's what it was. I mean, I'm saying that it can't uh, just go from, you know, extreme colds to, to you know, almost 40, 45 degrees, right? And three days of raining. No, well, it's not really normal to have a monsoon of three days, 72 hours worth of rain in the Midwest. I don't know, maybe it is, but I know the type of rain that we've had is the chemtrail rain, chem rain, after they spray aerosols. So, um, it, it, and and what I think, well, at least what somebody else thought and brought to my attention, which was, you had all this snow, right, and it's just gone so fast. Well, and you have the heating. Well, that created a, a delivery system for these chemicals to go into people's res uh, respiratory system and their blood system, bloodstream. And say how? Well, all that fog. I mean, there was dense, dense fog for like a good uh, 24, 48 hours. So people are going to be breathing that in. Uh, so maybe they figured out another delivery system uh, to get into people's bodies. But also, they just like to ruin your holidays, don't they? You know, make a bunch of high patches of ice, take your lights out. Anything that creates fear. So, And makes your life more miserable, like tr trying to travel uh, via air, right, and have to go through the TSA. Uh, strongest and the best thing that you can do as a consumer debt slave is is to spend more so if you went out and even you spend a bunch more which from what I heard the post office the UPS and all that they've had record numbers of just business a lot of people are uh, are spending a lot of money or at least credit right because that's it's been released by the Fed Bernanke's gone 
everything's good to go. He did his job, which was to, uh, when they say, get the economy back on track, to build confidence. So there's a lot of confidence in the system, so we might actually see a bubble again, uh, you know, in the next four years or whatever. But, uh, but as a consumer debt side, the best thing you can do is just go out and spend money, and people have done that. You know, and they're confident in this quote economy, and uh, I guess apparently that's not enough. So you got to constantly be punished for it. The strongest jet stream ever recorded to bring two superstorms to the UK region this week with possible tornadoes in Ireland. A massive storm system is moving out of the U.S. today, which went through Canada yesterday. It carries with its uh, strongest jet stream now ever recorded that will cause two superstorms. If uh, as if engineered. Huh? This never-before-seen jet stream 275 miles per hour in the upper levels is exiting Canada. This jet stream will move across the northern Atlantic and deepen a soften, or surface low that is only 1,004 MBs at this moment, whatever that uh, it says here. This jet stream will act as a vacuum, sucking the air from the center of the storm and dropping the pressure within it to an oppressive 930 MBs. This is a pressure fall of over 50 by uh, Monday evening and Tuesday morning uh, for the UK region. They said Wales, central and southern England, they'll have 50 millimeters of rainfall. Uh, double that over the hills, the rain will fall on already saturated ground, which will lead to flooding. And uh, of course, wind, 70 miles per hour, likely in the south. And Christmas Eve, 78 to 80 miles per hour in Northern Ireland and Scotland. It says we're not done yet. This powerful jet stream or jet will uh, deepen yet another low pressure system on Friday with this warm front sweep across Ireland with tornadic uh, dynamics. As far as the harp status goes, we have an update for Europe. Uh, they're getting uh, freakishly uh, pulsed there in uh, basically northern Europe. But I guess that kind of plays into what we were just talking about, uh, them getting hit with the uh, some pretty high winds and storms for North America. This is uh, what we're looking at. Looks like uh, low, medium to moderate, and the epicenter being Tennessee, surrounding in southern Illinois, Arkansas, Louisiana. Uh, like always, like about half the country. Uh, Australia, there is an update for that. Um, basically, low, uh, low to medium in northwest Australia. Okay, moving on here, I have this article, Saturnalia. Um, I know that was a holiday that I believe they celebrated in Rome. But it uh, says most Christmas traditions were stolen directly from the pagans. The Christmas tree, the Yule log, the Reese candles, the very date itself. You guys probably heard this, but it's an interesting article if you didn't, if uh, you never heard of this. But it um, says here, which used to fall on the winter solstice. Uh, long before the Gregorian calendar was adopted, gift giving, holiday cards, and verse, way sailing, or just plain getting drunk with holiday cheer, holly, mistletoe, kissing under the mistletoe, the 12 days of Christmas, eating feasts, even hooking up at the office party. Pretty much none of these had anything to do with the Christians. All were a pagan winter holiday ritual without a shred of connection uh, to the baby Jesus whatsoever. Before the church decided to file off the serial numbers and declare such traditions their own, Ironically enough, the biggest Christmas uh, tradition that today's traditionalist religious leaders tend to decry is Santa Claus. It is one of the few that arose directly from Christianity itself. There was really was a Saint Nicholas, although all the magic elves who give naughty and nice children's presents trappings were added later. And you do see this a lot on uh, Fox News, which is mainly uh, neoconservative. It says Obama family Christmas card has no mention of Christ or Christmas. The Obama family Christmas card contains no mention of Christ or Christmas, and yet another example of how politically correct sensitivities have eclipsed common sense. I just, I don't think he really believes in it, and that's what I think it is. You know, in the same, uh, well, not in the same corners like his InfoWars, but um, some will. But uh, unlike Fox News, they'll say, uh, oh, Obama's a Muslim, you know. I think the only thing that they could really say or try to argument they try to make is that uh, he's not a natural born citizen, so. But, uh, you know, even then they'll call you a racist. You know, these micro apartments, we're kind of talking about tree houses and these uh, uh, clay type homes. 
and uh, about a week ago in a report, micro apartments could be hazardous to your mental health. Apparently living in small New York apartments can cramp more than your style. Bloomberg is a champion of micro units. Some experts are concerned that living in 250 to 370 feet spaces could be risky. So, so it might be nice for people, young professionals in their 20s, but they definitely can be unhealthy for older people, say in their 30s and 40s, who face different stress factors that make tight living conditions a problem. It says that the space-saving trend of tiny apartments can lead to increased claustrophobia, domestic abuse, and alcoholism. On top of that, researchers believe that children need bigger spaces to flourish. I've studied children in crowded apartments and low-income housings a lot. They can end up becoming withdrawn and have trouble studying and concentrating. It's like being cramped uh, living environments could have an even worse effect on their psyche than an older in individual. And you do see, you know, you do see this uh, promoted a lot, these micro homes, you know. Uh, I, I do somewhat agree with that assessment. You should have some room to flourish in that. Um, but, you know, when you see it in the some of the propaganda, like the mega cities video, the smart cities and that, and even in China they already have some of these, is that it's not really made for families at all. It's just made for single people or couples. That's it. And people move into, would move into these things because they're supposed to be cost-effective. That's what it says in the last article. But, again, that's using money and uh, um, the economy as a way to not depopulate but control population numbers or inevitably depopulate uh, certain people is uh, that's the way they do it they use the economy to do it like so as far as using vaccines and all this stuff and stuff in the food yeah so it's bad you can look out for it, you can avoid it but you know if you don't have money to have children and a family and support them then uh, you're not going to have them. So you'll just like self-censoring, um, you know, as far as gun rights go. You know, people will, will, will do that themselves. They'll just uh, self-regulate. Uh, same with eugenics. A majority of scientific data has been lost uh, due within 20 years. So they lost a lot of uh, information, research, hard-earned research. 80% of data are lost within 20 years of publication. It's not the only thing that's lost. It's 8.5 trillion in taxpayer dollars unaccounted for since 1996. So a trillion still missing. In France, the uh, uh, company implanted the first artificial heart. It can beat up to five years. And the patient better be uh, able to afford it, otherwise the uh, repo men will come to get him. It says in the future, when artificial organs can be bought on credit, it revolves around a man who struggles to make payments on his heart. He has purchased. So... He must therefore go on the run before said ticker is repossessed. Uh, Merck issues voluntary recall of 743,000 vials of Gardasil HPV vaccine. They're saying that the uh, vaccines may contain glass particles. Then you have scientists uh, claiming the H5N1 ferret experiments could lead to pandemic. It's not actually anything that's new to most of us, but the 50 senior scientists from 14 countries, including Nobel laureates, uh, have basically denounced claims that the ferret experiments are necessary for the development of a new flu vaccine and antiviral drugs. So they're criticizing the arguments made by these flu researchers who are trying to make this bird flu virus more dangerous to humans by repeatedly infecting laboratory ferrets. Changing gears, Duck Dynasty's Phil Robertson uh, refuses to back down from anti-gay comments. Then you have this lesbian saying Stalinist tactics used against Duck Dynasty, Phil Robertson. So remember, I was just talking about this. There's even lesbians in that that aren't even for how hardcore they are about this stuff. Then comes this Camille Paglia, professor at the University of the Arts in Philadelphia. She says that uh, the suspension was uncalled for and signals a cultural obsession with political correctness. There's actually laws being set up in Italy yeah, it's uh, homophobia. It says police beat, arrest, abortion law protesters in Spain. These were women that were actually protesting against a law that will restrict access to abortions. And as troops look to video games like Call of Duty for training, which is probably what they were intended to do for recruiting purposes, a real-life RoboCop may be coming to a street near you, security... As you know, we've entered into a contract with the city to run local law enforcement. No. We need something more. We need a 24-hour-a-day police officer, a cop who doesn't need to eat or sleep. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you to the future of law enforcement. 
Ed 209.